is me, Chris Candido. No gimmicks needed. The finale is as it was last time, the firing line. I'm going to give you a bunch of names. You tell me uh, what you think about them. I imagine they're all cool, or most of them are anyway. And if there's a funny story to uh, go along with it, please uh, please put it uh, along with the name and what you think of them. And the first one is uh, my man, Bobby Blaze. Bobby Blaze. Yeah, he's uh, I like what Bobby Blaze. He's cool as shit. And he was the first one to to take the top row power bomb. And um, yeah, I like him. I did his show. Uh, you know, we bullshit back and forth on the, you know, on the phone sometimes. And he, he's he's a cool dude. I never really met him until like recently. But yeah, he's a cool dude. I like Bobby. Yeah, it's funny, actually, because Bobby uh, ended up getting in contact with me uh, because he said, oh, Johnny Candido said that you were all right. So, uh, oh, great. And then I ended up in- interviewing him. So everyone sort of, anyway, yeah, he's a great guy, Bobby. Uh, next one is nice. uh, Johnny Hotbody. Johnny Hotbody. Holy shit. That's the name I haven't heard in a while. Johnny Hotbody. So him and my brother, they were actually wrestling each other the night that Chris met Tammy. And I knew they'd come up the ranks in the Indies together. They were really good friends. And um, so then... Uh, years later, 2007, I'm, uh, I'm wrestling at the ECW arena for pro wrestling unplugged. And I end up opposite Johnny Hotbody in a, in a, a three-way tag. It was, uh, it was really cool. It was cool to, you know, to see one of, one of the guys that was like, you know, instrumental in my, my brother's not, you know, one of the guys that I always saw as a kid and now he's, I get to work with him, you know? So it was pretty cool. I like Johnny Hotbody. Yeah, I, I had these ECW tapes that used to like feature like TV from maybe a two month span, you know, the best of. And um, Johnny Hotbody was, it's ECW legend, Johnny Hotbody returning. And it was 94. I was like, God, how old has this dude been working? For real. Yeah. yeah. In 2007, he was still great too. Yeah. So uh, I'll, give you the, I'll give you the next one Dawn Marie. Dawn Marie, I uh, was, she was always nice, always cool to me. I, I uh, again, when I knew where I was, kind of young so it was more like a hello type deal as to where i the guys i would like pester to like you know wrestle with or play video games with or some shit so i really wasn't i really i i knew her but not really like on a personal level like that yeah uh kevin sullivan someone else uh instrumental uh to a point i think in chris's early career yeah just um for me and kevin sullivan it was just like hello just just being nice to each other i never really got a chance to like sit down and pick his brain i just you know said hello goodbye Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Mick Foley. He's a really awesome guy. I remember meeting him when he was Cactus Jack down in uh, Smoky Mountain. Um, him and my brother had a really great relationship. I haven't seen him in a while. Last time I saw him was at my brother's funeral. Um, just uh, a, a re- he, he really is like a genuinely great guy, you know. So it's, you know, I talk to him once in a while on the on the Twitter. So um, it's great that I still, have, you know, can, can reach out to him. And him and Chris had some great matches. Yeah, he's probably like um, Al Snow and a couple of others who are just like too nice to be in wrestling. Yeah, for real, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got a few more. Just incredible. PJ, yeah, he's he's definitely my boy. Um, we've, we've we've had some some parties together, me and him. We were. Uh, he's he's he's. I don't know if he's from Jersey, for, but he's lived here forever. So uh, he's great in the ring, um, and he's a he's a good guy to have a couple of drinks with too. I, I like I like Pete a lot. <laughs> He's cool as hell. Do you remember when he came into ECW? Were you there at the time when, um, like, you just because he was probably like Chris in the sense that he'd come from a pretty crappy gimmick, and people probably knew he was capable of more. Do you, do you remember yeah. like his response? Uh, yeah, you know the fans' I, response to him. I do. They freaking loved him. They got behind him when he was just incredible. Obviously, they loved it. And then he had, then he had Jason and uh, Nicole Bass in, in his corner. But no, his work then was like unbelievable. And he was, it was so good because you got to see a lot of the guys like my brother and PJ, uh, you know, just incredible um, and balls, like kind of like be themselves and, you know, work to the best of their ability, which was good with Paul that he kind of like, like would give them more creative control of what they wanted to do than other places would. Mm. So Ricky Morton. Um, Dude, he's still a character. He, uh, he it's funny because he could still play a young, good looking guy, baby face. And he's like 60. Like, you know, I think he's just amazing to watch in the ring. Um, if you're a fan of any tag team wrestling, you know, the rock and roll express is, uh, is where it's at yeah. him. And, uh, who what's, what's, what's the other guy's Robert, name? Gibson? Robert Gibson. Robert Gibson. Yeah. He's punky and the other guys who, but, uh, yeah, he freaking, uh, he's just a great wrestler. And it's funny that he can still pull, pull off being, a like, a a 
a good looking baby face at the age he is, you know, yeah. so good for him. Right. Nobody else will probably realize why I'm asking this, but Kamala. Kamala. I think. Uh, you wrestled him, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, I did. I did. He um, he was cool. He was, he was, he was, you know, I wrestled a lot of the, the older guys because I liked the way my brother wrestled. Like, well, I, I try to take. I like bumping around, and make people look the best as they possibly can. So I really enjoyed wrestling Kamala. It's uh, and and he was really an awesome guy, you know. I, I like I said, I've I wrestled Kamala, Brutus Beefcake, uh, Tito Santana, uh, Greg Lex Valentine, Luger, Greg Valentine. Me and Greg Valentine, we worked each other and we tagged together. Um, there's I, I, King Kong Bundy. I've wrestled a lot of the older guys on my, when I was coming up, and uh, it was always great. I always had a great time. Jimmy Snuka. You know, I could go on for a while, but yeah, I had a great time working with those guys. Uh, Joey Styles, again, another cool guy, New York guy. Um, but we got along great with him. And even when I saw him on, like later on in life, I, you know, he, he recognized me, and he's always super cool, super cordial, and uh, great at what he does. You know, he's really a, a great ring announcer. Yeah, um, I've got one, two, three, four. Uh, la, 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 la. We'll go Spike Dudley. You mentioned him before, I think, as well. Yeah, Spike Dudley's so freaking awesome. Um, he's so tough. I, I work with Spike too. He's a he's a tough guy, man. I remember me and him. We had a hardcore match. I think it was Falls Count Anywhere, and just me and him trading forearms. His little forearms hurt like hell. He was laying them <laughs> in, and he's so accurate with a chair. He's like Sabu. I mean, we did like a spot where I I went to the top rope to do a dive to the outside or something, and he folded up a chair and threw it at me and hit me perfectly right in the head with it. And uh, no, he's just a great guy. And uh, actually, during that match the bottom rope broke and uh, we used that as like an instrument, like I was strangling him with it. And then, uh, but yeah, no, he's, he's a great, uh, Spike's a great talent and a really cool guy behind the, behind the scenes. Yeah. With the forearms, did they hurt because he just, he just had very bony, sharp arms or was he just <laughs> That's throwing them in? Well, both, I think <laughs> we were both kind of lacing each other up, but uh, yeah, I remember his little, his little, like his little bony forearms, but, like hurt pretty good, you know? <laughs> you know, not like he wasn't like you know he was snug, but yeah, he was really good. Yeah, in and cools out. Stiff in safe places, as they uh, right. as they say. Uh, I, I sorry, I actually still have four more. Um, Dixie Carter, nice, very cordial. Again, I, uh, I, you know, I, I haven't talked to her in uh, forever, but you know, after my brother passed and everything, you know, I went out there, and uh, she was nothing but nice and, and welcoming and cool as hell. So I, I don't know her uh, like on the business side of things, but just as a person, she was always really cool to me. Yeah. Um, here's one that I don't think I've ever, ever asked before. Axel Rotten. Oh, dude. Axel Rotten was so awesome. Me and him were, 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 were good friends. And I talked to him right before he passed, which is, it, it freaking it kills me. But I'll tell a good Axel story because he used to love when I tell the story. So he stayed at Chris's house for like, I don't know, a couple of weeks. He had nowhere to go. And, uh, so in, in Chris's driveway, me and my friends set up a basketball hoop and we'd, uh, you know, we play three on three, two on two, whatever. And we're like, if we didn't have a guy, we'd get Chris, but he sucked. He would start chopping somebody and turn the basketball game into a wrestling match. But Axel comes out and me and my friends are like, you know, we're like, all right, you could play. So we gave Axel the ball. All of a sudden he like dribbles it through his legs, freaking goes around his back and knocks down a jumper. We're like, holy shit, Axel can ball. So Axel jumped in the game and he was good. We couldn't believe it. Like we <laughs> thought he was going to suck, but he was pretty good, man. Axel go play some hoops. <laughs> With the balls and Axel, I mean, you look at a tag team and you just think, do you know what? I bet those two really get on outside the ring as well. It's not just like a company decision to put them two together. Uh, they they did, but balls like to put heat on Axel and Axel put heat on balls. <laughs> you know, like, right. you know, like balls would be like, Axel didn't show up. And Axel would be like, dude, balls is a fucking nut. Like, so they, they would like kind of blame each other for shit, but they they were cool, you know? So <laughs> yeah, dude, I love Axel. He's a man. Yeah. Uh, Pee Wee Anderson. Uh, man, I haven't heard that name in forever. He, uh, he was a great ref. He was great at, great at what he did. Where is he now? Do you know? I've got absolutely no idea. I just, I just remember the name and put it in sort of last minute. Oh shit. I got the Zoom meeting from the other guy at 11 I booked. Oh, Christ. Um, I'll tell you what, I've got one more minute. I'll ask you one more name. Or is he calling okay. now? He's, he just sent me a link to the Zoom gimmick. Okay, then I'll ask you one more name, uh, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Jamie Dundee. Jamie Dundee. Jamie Dundee. Jamie Dundee. 
uh, what, 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 uh, what, what the hell was his gimmick? Uh, Wolfie D and JC Ice, Jamie Lundy. He was a he's a character. He's cool as shit, uh, and he can work his ass off. I, I had no idea how how great he was, and then I went back and saw him versus my brother at the Elks Lodge in Queens, and he was a hell of a worker and a hell of a personality and, and a really cool guy.